Okay, continuing on. This is the most famous guy contending that there's meter in the prophecies. His name is Robert Loth. This particular translation of his own um, is published after his death in 1832, so the first publishing of it I don't know when. But Loth was made famous, or made himself famous, or became famous when in 1752 he started to argue that the prophecies are metered, which of course they are, that's what I've been showing for the last eight years. But he encountered a lot of heat in making that claim. This is one of his books trying to argue that there's meter in the prophecies and in front of your face is something that I've already done a lot of work on and this was how I discovered the meter was Isaiah 53 which in Hebrew starts in Isaiah 52 13 so that's the text that you see on screen this book which you can get is part of the 250 rare Bibles CD from the old CD bookshop at gmail.com it's also on eBay the old CD bookshop is also on eBay that's where I got it and you can get it too as part of the 250 rare Bibles it's in disc 2 not disc 1 and like and Loth did a lot of writing and this is one of the first parts of what he wrote about Isaiah to Malachi trying to show unsuccessfully trying to show that the prophecy is metered even though it isn't technically considered poetry his arguments are really dumb that's one reason why he didn't catch it but his arguments are dumb because the competition he was facing was saying oh but it's not poetry if it's not like Western poetry honey this isn't Western it's Hebrew. They're not Western. Everything Western came from the Hebrew. Okay? The Greeks learned a lot about what they did from the Hebrews. That doesn't mean they're going to have exactly the same poetical styles. So you'll notice that here I'm on page 103. He spends the first, I don't know, 50 to 100 pages <clears throat> trying to say, well, you see, because they use flowery languages and flowery words in the, in the Hebrew, and they use flowery words in poetry, therefore it's poetic, therefore you should count it as being poetry. Except that dear Mr. Ro Dr. Robert Loth here himself is not counting the syllables in Hebrew. Well, he starts out that way. Behold, my servant shall prosper. Behold, my servant shall prosper. That's eight syllables. That's also how many syllables it is in the Hebrew. Hine. Yaskil avdi yahum. See? Hine. Yaskil avdi yahum. Eight syllables in the Hebrew. Okay, but the second clause in the Hebrew is also eight syllables. Wanisa wagavach meod. See, eight syllables. That's in Isaiah 52 13, which is where the chapter 53 really starts in the Hebrew. Okay, so what happened to Loth here? He's using 16 syllables, not eight. Why'd he double it? He shall be raised aloft and magnified and very highly exalted. Now, you don't need that many words in English to translate the eight words in Hebrew. Okay? One Nisa, and he's raised. Wagavach, and he's glorified. Me'od, vehemently. Or, well, vehemently is too many syllables. One Nisa, and he's raised. Three syllables each. Wagavach, and he's glorified. Well, okay, that's four syllables in English. He's glorified. That'd be three. Okay? Ma'od. It means greatly, really means vehemently. Okay, so just say greatly. And now you have eight syllables in the English, just like you do in the Hebrew. What's with all of this? See? He's caving into his accusers. 
He's not following the, the syllable counts now. Isaiah 53 is perfectly metered in paragraphs, so perfect that Matthew uses those same paragraphs to do his genealogy, and so does Luke. Did anybody bother to count the syllables to see where that stuff came from? Where did Matthew get his 44? From Isaiah 53, 13 and 14. Where did, where did Luke get his 77 sons? From the sum of the syllable counts in Isaiah 30, 52, 13, 14, and 15. And 15 is about the Gentiles. That's why Luke is adding in verse 15 to craft 77. Because verse 15 is 35 syllables long. Exactly the same as Isaiah 53, 10. Every single paragraph metered to seven has an exact mate in Isaiah. All of the paragraphs are sevened and paired. So what happened to Robert Lowe? He got the syllable count right here. So why did he double it here? Why did he just keep going? This is why the scholars do not know that the prophecies are metered just like the parts they recognize as poetry. You don't understand. Measure, meter, accuracy. Makes it easy to remember if it's in sets of seven and it's prophetic and the 42 and Matthew obviously knew that 42 is double 21, which is how many people that our boy Jacob entered into Egypt with, not counting the other kids, because he had two wives, two times 21, you get the pun, 42. And then their kids, the total ended up being 70, except it would have been and should have been 72, but two of the kids died. And of course, that's what Genesis tells you. But that's what 42 means. Generative. And that's why Matthew uses it. And that's why Isaiah is counting 42 syllables between start of verse 13 and start of verse 14. Isaiah is counting 42 syllables. And he gets to 77 here, which is when David died. This whole thing is, a, is, is a, sort of like talking back to David's lifetime. The promise to David in 2 Samuel 7 sort of being reiterated here. Matthew knew that. Luke knew that. That's why their genealogies are patched to these syllable counts. How come Robert Loth didn't know that but a brain out does? You see, this is what's killing me. This is why Trump was elected. People aren't doing their homework. But anyway, at least you can go look. This is the one guy that started, you know, the argument. And he doesn't, you know, prove his point, unfortunately. But he's the one who started the argument. Gee, maybe prophecy is meter too. Yeah, duh. What do you think Matthew 24 and 25 is? In sevens. Very deliberately. Like Isaiah 53. So go look it up because I've already done the videos on these from eight years ago. I gotta hang up now, I'm too angry.